I would like to say some words about my babushka that lived with us in Boston for the last three and a half years. There's also some Russian sayings on the screens that I think reflect a lot about her, in my opinion. Baba has always been a survivor. She was born the youngest of uh, seven children in 1914. And uh, at three and a half years old, she didn't want to leave her next youngest sister, Sonia. So she started accompanying her to school. And uh, the teacher said, well, just for a couple of days, I'm sure it will be fine and she'll get tired of it. Well, it didn't last. A couple of days it lasted her entire high school career and she graduated with straight A's she was uh, married at uh, 25 but unfortunately lost her husband in one of the first uh, battles in World War II and spent the next five years uh, looking for him because he was listed as missing she raised my mom as a single parent while uh, working full-time as a head accountant for a big company in Kiev. Baba was not uh, indecisive. She decided where my mom and my dad would live. She decided how they would spend their money. And uh, when my mom became pregnant, she was the one that bought her a piano, deciding that uh, I would grow up learning how to play. Baba always took care of me. When I was a little boy, she would uh, write me long poems for my birthdays, always uh, bring me big gifts. And uh, apparently when I went away to camp, she would uh, follow me and get a job working in the camp at the kitchen or cleaning so that she could keep an eye on me. One of the greatest things we are thankful to her for is that it was her decision to come to America and initially some of the family members uh, were against it but she was able to persuade everybody and once people were in agreement she was the one that worked the channels in the government and filled out the paperwork and made the arrangements for us to immigrate to America. While awaiting entry visa into America and Italy for three months she would uh, work on the streets every day selling trinkets that we smuggled out of Russia on the streets so that we would have money for food and to be able to travel and see the beautiful countryside. Within one week of arrival in America, she was busy at work at two jobs, cleaning houses and cooking for a fraternity in order to make money so that of course I would have my piano and could continue with my studies. While in America, she was able to resume her lifelong practice of uh, Judaism, which she enjoyed very much. And uh, she was a congregational member at the uh, Park Synagogue in uh, Cleveland. And uh, she was able to memorize all of the texts and recite them by heart, along with uh, 
many Russian uh, poems and uh, poetry. Pushkin was her favorite, and uh, she would recite it for anybody that would be willing to listen for an hour as she went through Eugene Onegin or many other of her favorites. Baba had an adventurous streak and uh, she would be reluctant to accept no for an answer. This would include when she needed uh, to get a ride someplace and had missed the bus, she would get into strangers' cars and announce to them where she needed to go, completely unsolicited. Also, when shopping, she would decide what she wanted to pay for a certain item and literally not leave the store until the sales clerk would accept her offer of payment while behind the back my mom would signal to the clerk that she would uh, pay the balance. When she turned uh, 80 or 85 she decided that uh, it was time to move to Florida and essentially without uh, much consultation with anybody else secured an apartment and uh, went on her way uh, two years later to be brought back kicking and screaming because uh, she was completely uh, in over her head. The same was uh, pretty much true when uh, at age 94 she decided that uh, it was time to move to Boston to be closer to us and uh, sure enough from one nursing home to another she came and uh, the one thing that she brought with her on the plane was candy for the children. She never ever came to our house from the nursing home without bringing candy. In fact, at one point she had squirreled away so much candy from all the cookies and the Halloween candy that her drawers were literally unable to be closed because she never wanted to be unprepared to give a gift and uh, make somebody smile. That's probably what uh, I will remember the most about her is the uh, dichotomy between somebody that is fun-loving and adventurous and yet tough and uh, single-minded. Once she makes up her mind, it's uh, pretty much impossible to change. I am so glad that uh, she made up her mind to come to Boston for the rest of her uh, life and uh, we benefited so much from being around her and uh, I think she benefited uh, from being around the kids and uh, we are all just very happy with that decision. Alright, recording you guys. What are you guys doing here? And uh, although the kids will certainly remember her most by the way she was the last uh, three and a half years that she was here, I think that uh, me and uh, our family and all of you should remember her like she was 
prior to that, when she was independent, strong, happy, healthy, vibrant, giving, friendly, smart, and uh, we will miss her dearly. And uh, I wish the kind of life that uh, she had to uh, everyone that uh, wants to be happy. Tell the night time 